Episode five on the barn progress DIY shop build, dream shop build on a budget. Let's get to it. So yesterday we ended by lining the walls with our 24 inch space two by fours all the way around on this side and the front portion finished out. Uh, I'm leaving framing off of the service box here for the electric just until that's all done because I might have that gone through just to make sure all the wiring is up to code and the way that it should be uh, because I don't want to put all the tin up and everything else and then that needs to all get redone and then it's just a complete pain in the butt for those guys. It could, it could still be done but it would just be a lot more difficult and create a lot more work that doesn't need to be done if we just hold off just a little bit longer. So other than that, everything else down this wall is good. We're gonna be working on this far wall first today. We're gonna be working on this. It's gonna be a nice easy wall to get done and then we're gonna go from there to finishing on the back wall and then once that is done, hopefully then we can work on some of the roof rafters here and I read your guys' comments. Most of you had some very insightful information that is worth taking into consideration. So a lot of you made some good points. You're like, listen, I get it wanting to make a nice flat flush ceiling, but the issue is with the size of this barn, if you do that, the ceiling clearance is only gonna be like gonna be like nine feet or like nine and a half feet once you put the concrete in. And then you're gonna lose like another 24 inches of space in the center of the barn if you make it a you know a flat surface like a straight flat ceiling which would look clean but the problem being then we will never be able to put a lift in this barn if we wanted to versus for now if we wanted to if we leave the rafters high like they are and we just reinforce what's there to make it as structurally safe as possible, and then we just leave it with that height. Then if we wanted to, we could put a lift in this corner here, and then although it's only gonna be about 11 and a half feet of ceiling clearance, at least that's enough to where if we did wanna put a lift in, we could still lift up even a truck like Rosine that's, you know, on the tire seven foot tall, we would have the ability to lift that truck up even, let's say, three, four feet off the ground and be able to work down around it, you know, for stuff like installing lift kits and stuff like that. It, it, it would give you enough room, enough clearance to where you could still do a lot more with the shop space by leaving that additional space. Because of course the difference between the top of the walls and those uh, two by fours up here that is used as some of that rafter support is about 24 inches of difference. So we would actually be able to keep about two feet of clearance, which would be pretty nice. So I'm gonna take you guys up on that and I'm gonna do my best to just reinforce this. I'm gonna to talk to a couple more people on the best way to do that. If you guys have any more helpful comments, please let me know. But I'm gonna to try to reinforce what's here, make sure it's all good before we close it up and try to go with that method for now because that really could be a great alternative to where you know we get the ceiling done it's gonna have an arc in it, but at least that arc will allow us to have more clearance just in case we do decide we wanna get that lift put in that I mentioned wanting to do. At least it would be an option to where you could technically still put one in and you're gonna have just enough clearance to where if you wanted to use it, you could at least still get trucks several feet off the ground. Um, it's not gonna be like so high that you can be six foot tall walking around under the things, but it would at least be high enough you could get under comfortably if you had to to do certain things, like I said, with suspension and stuff like that to get under the vehicle. It just makes it a lot easier. So let's get to working on tying in more of these two by fours around to hang our tin. And once we get with that, we'll move on to the next step if we have the time.
Okie dokie. I've been out here, I think from 10 a.m. to it's about 6.45 right now. Finally got the entire barn framed up for the tin. The entire barn is now framed for the tin except for a couple spots behind me that are still missing some two by four. I miscalculated it by uh, I think one board. So I have to put one on the top of that header board there from that post up to that one there and then run a straight one all the way across the top and then another small angled one down there. So really like two 16 foot boards. And then that's, that's all I needed. Everything else, I got it all framed up and ready to hang the tin. Everything else is ready to go. Super pumped, super pumped. They got a lot of progress. So I got this whole wall done here. I made a correction with a board that I hung uh, pro improperly yesterday and I fixed that, notched it for that beam down there so that it sits where it's supposed to be and everything, got that all good. These are all tied in nice and snug. And then around this window, I boxed it in. I'm gonna have to seal off with like foam sealer or something around the seams or at least weather stripping maybe uh, just to keep the breeze out. So maybe I'll do some weather stripping on the inside and outside just to keep the breeze and rain from coming in or foam seal it. But the only problem with the foam is if I ever wanna replace the window, it's gonna make a a really big mess. It can still come out, but it's just gonna be a pain. I got the window all framed out. I'm not exactly sure how you would normally do this, but the way I did it was I ran my two by fours up to the framing for the window, and then I cut pieces to fit in between those gaps like so. That way there's a nice surface to A, tack tin to around the window, but then B, when you're looking at the window, um, all these gaps are gonna be sealed and you're not gonna have like the tin up here with a big air gap going into the wall, which they make trim and stuff obviously, but for what I was doing at the time, I just thought, oh, this would be a good idea. So I just boxed it in so that it would be flush all the way down. So when you tack the tin, it's flush and you can't see back behind the tin there. And then up top, it's framed in, and then down the sides, I, again, took these scrap pieces of two by four and boxed it in between. I don't do construction for a living, clearly, but I just do it when I gotta do it on my own with my own stuff. I just do what I know how to do and what I think I know how to do, I guess. And then these are all ran down to this wall, that top corner board, I had to notch it also, run it all the way over to there. And then I had to frame out that window as best as I knew how to as well. And then I ran a board up there. And I think I'm gonna go with the method of tacking the tin to the actual roof structure after we reinforce some stuff. Which again, I thought I was gonna have time to do that today. I don't know why I think that I have more time than I do when I'm working solo. It, like this is such an easy task, it really is. So if somebody's wondering, can they do this on their own? Pretty much all this, even like tinning the walls and doing all the reinforcement stuff and hanging all the two by fours. That stuff can be done solo easily. The only thing that you're gonna have to have help with is hanging the tin on the ceiling because it's just such awkward weight. It's not that it's overly heavy, it's just the way that it's stretched across and stuff. You've gotta have at least two you know, guys to be able to hold that tin in place to tack it. Otherwise, it's gonna be all funky and crazy looking and you're just gonna hurt yourself or it's just gonna look terrible. But anyways, so I got all that framed out. Got the boards ran across the top and tacked that to the top of the post. Ran that across so we have something to tack the tin to. And then framed out this window. Again, best I thought to do it. So it's all boxed with two by four. And then, you know, it's just, it's boxed and flush all the way around. And I ran the two by fours to the post here, flush with the post. And then I just took sections, as you can see there, and I, put them in between the two by fours coming across. That way, once we get the tin tacked, there's no air gaps looking into the wall and everything's sealed off nice and tight. That way, if we do blow an insulation down into the walls, if we decide to do that, you know, it doesn't loosely just come out from the sides of the window, but the window can still be accessed. If you need to pull it out, you can still get to it the way that it is. And I had to put a two by four tacked on to there in between the original two by fours that they tacked the tin to for the exterior and the inside one. I wanted to make sure the spacing was proper, so I used a two by four, sandwiched it, and then that gave me something to tack to running from that post to here. 
because the closest board otherwise to tack to would have been back in there, which obviously the spacing wouldn't have been the same and it would have not worked well at all. And then the tin would have had like a swoop to it. I didn't want to do that. But yeah, and then everything up there is all tacked up and good and it's all fine and dandy. Pretty good progress, pretty good progress. I'm gonna get all this stuff out of here before the next video probably, or in the next video, because I want it to feel like what it's gonna feel like once it's done. And so I need to just, I need to get rid of this stuff because it's just, you know, it's, it's messing with my mind in the amount of space that it has. It's just taking up a lot of area that I don't really want it to. And um, I gotta get that loaded up anyways and get it hauled out because he said not this upcoming week. I did get in touch with the concrete guy. He said that this week, it's going to be a really good weather week, so they're going to be doing a lot of their other outside construction stuff. And he said, but the following week, he's going to get in here and get it done. So at least I've got something to look forward to in terms of a date range. So pretty excited about that because once this concrete's done and all this junk is, you know, boxed up and moved out until this gets done and completed and we find new places for a lot of this stuff, it'll just have such a better feel in the shop not being dirt and rock on the floor. And then what I'm thinking about doing is building a corner office in the shop space. So I'm kind of, you know, a little bit, I'm a little bit torn on how I want to do it for sure. But I think what I want to do is do a corner office and take that corner office from that post, come out eight feet straight to that post. So it's going to be an eight foot by eight foot corner office. And so it's not going to be really big, but I don't want it to be. Uh, I just want it to be big enough to where like I can have a desk in there, an office chair and a couple chairs there, nice high ceiling so I can hang photos of all of our previous winners, which there's a lot of them, which you could be next. We've had 31 truck winners, 30 were diesels, one's a gasser, and now we've got this diesel giveaway 31 live right now, which will make it 30 one diesels that we've given away. We've given away Hellcat as well. We've given away a lot of freaking stuff, lots of cash prizes, which by the way, we're choosing two random customers every day until the last day of the giveaway to give them $50 as a thank you for supporting the brand and the business. So some of you guys, I think yesterday we, we drew two guys that they both spent like less than 20 bucks in the store and they got 50 bucks. So they got all their money back plus more, which I don't know what they're going to do with it, but if they really wanted to, they could just spend that back on the store and get even more entries for free. And all those free entries could literally win them a truck in $5,000 cash. So who knows? But all I'm saying is every single day, we're going to pick two random customers, give you guys 50 bucks each. So if you place an order today, you might get a message tomorrow morning that you won the $50 that we were doing for the day before. So every single day, two more customers that place orders on those days and giving them free cash as a thank you for supporting the brand. Anyways, get in on that if you want. And also, it is your last week to enter to win this 95 Compound Turbo 12 Up Cummins plus $5,000 cash. So if you wanna get in on that, it is your last week. 15 times entries are live for everything on the store right now. Mystery boxes, 20 times entries for those always. Giveaway's almost over, so if you wanna grab those entries, do that while you can. But anyways, the office is gonna be so sick. I just need it to be big enough to be, you know, a corner desk with my business chair and then be able to have a couple chairs around so that when winners come, we can do the paperwork in there, out here with the shop. And once this is all finished up, we'll have a nice indoor area to be able to, you know, reveal the trucks, have a good time in here, hang out, whether it's raining, snowing, hot, cold, it doesn't matter, we'll have an indoor place that's can be temperature regulated to be able to make those moments so much cooler. You can see the current project we're working on. It'll be in here as well. The, you know, the whole experience will be just, just so awesome. Hopefully that can be happening here by the end of the summer. You guys are seeing trucks inside this building when it's finished for the reveals and it'll be so sick. Corner office will be nice for like, you know, signing over titles and having like an exclusive place that we can keep dust free and clean of all the photos of the giveaway winners. The service box will be in there on the wall. And it'll, the whole thing will just be, it, it'll just be sweet. It's not gonna be a big office, it's just gonna be big enough to do business. It's just gonna be a nice out of touch. It's not gonna take up too much space away from the shop. I don't want it to overwhelmingly take up space away from the shop. That's why I just want it to be an eight by eight corner. That way it's not taking up too much. And it's gonna be a corner that, for the most part, isn't really gonna like cost us too much space anyway. Just throwing some things out here. So if I have the corner office right here, that would also make a good opportunity to have like a workbench here or like a roll up toolbox 
up between the door and the office right there because it's gonna be kind of like a wasted space, I guess, where I don't wanna take up wall space over there, and I don't really wanna take up any wall space anywhere else, but it'd be a nice place to have a toolbox up there, maybe a free hanging air compressor that I can just pull the hose down that's up above it. Oh, I'm just trying to think out loud here, and then maybe on the back wall have like a heavy duty rack to hang like my impacts and my tools and stuff that I are like my go-tos that aren't part of the tool bench. It would just be like my tool wall is what I wanna make this corner right here. And that way we can leave all the rest of the wall space pretty much empty and clean and clear. And then maybe I'll create half of this for storage for the tractor mower and the other half as my own like storage unit for shelving for some of the stuff that I just don't wanna store in the barn. Like a lot of the stuff that you see in there, I'd rather store it somewhere out here. So close this in and then create some storage shelving and stuff to where anything that's not truck and shop related, I can store it out here like all my fishing gear and accessories and all that other stuff is just not really related to that. But anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that thumbs up. If you have any tips, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to enter to win that truck and the two $50 winners every single day that we're gonna be drawing. Get in on that if you want. Anyways guys, thanks so much. I will catch you in the next video. Peace.